Hello and welcome to Enterprise PDM Quick Tips, Smarter Part Numbers. My name is Katherine Brooks. I'm an Enterprise PDM Applications Engineer for Trimec. Today, hopefully, you'll uh, learn a little bit of uh, additional capabilities with Enterprise PDM out of the box for smarter and uh, better uh, part numbers. So building a smarter part number inside of Enterprise PDM, let's say, for example, that uh, you need a part number that requires user input for drop-down uh, menu items for different types of files like bolt, screw, nut, etc. But you want to turn that type into a three-digit code. So bolt turns into BLT. And then you also have a component for a vendor. Uh, and the vendor is going to be that thing they make, for example. And uh, when the user chooses the vendor code, that thing they make, it translates into the code TTT. And then last but not least, you have a serialized component, which is the number 0372 that strings all three together into the new part number. Well, you can use this. Uh, you can use lists for cards with alias sets, data cards with input formulas to build this smarter part number. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. So we're going to start off with lists for cards, showing you how to create uh, alias sets for uh, the lists, as well as jumping over to data cards, editing an existing data card or creating a new data card using input formula. And last but not least, we're going to test this inside the vault. So let's take a look at alias set lists. Uh, so you could potentially create a new list with an alias set. As you can see here, we have file type and vendor code. So let's take a look at those inside of the administration tool. So I've got my SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM administration tool. And under my lists for cards node, I have file type as well as vendor code for the alias set. If I double click, I can open this uh, file type alias set open. And uh, we can see the displayed value is the first column and the alias is the second column. So the displayed value is what's going to be seen by the end user. Whereas the alias, for example, spring SPG, uh, is is going to be stored in the database tables as well as utilized inside of our input formula. And the data type is going to be text with alias. Anytime you make a change or update a list for cards, you're going to want to also save that. Uh, if you wanted to create a new list, right click on list for cards, choose add new, and drop the data type down from text to text with alias, and start filling out the displayed value and the alias that matches with that displayed value. So our data card with input formula, we're going to want to take those lists with, uh, for cards that use the alias sets and update the data card with new fields. We're going to use the alias set as well as a serial number. And then last but not least, we're going to add an input formula for the new part number. So let's take a look once again inside of our administration tool. First and foremost, we have our serial number component that we're going to use called number component in a moment. And I just want to point out that it is just a single uh, four digit counter value uh, starting at 381. So if we look over in our cards, I should have a testing input number data card that's available here. And I'm just going to show you what was uh, used to make each one of these different fields. So I've got a combo box drop list uh, that I have tied to the special value, which is the list for cards, uh, called file type. I also have... Um, tied to this to the variable name file type. Same sort of situation here with our vendor code combo box drop list. I have this vendor variable with the special value vendor code. So this is my uh, list for cards using my alias set. And then this is my variable that uh, is tied to this field. 
For number, we have the variable called number, as well as the serial number for our default value, and we're going to choose the number component for this displayed um, default value serial number number component. I've also turned this into a read-only field. I don't want uh, any of the users coming in and, and changing this serial number component. Uh, last but not least, we're going to string each of these different portions together to create our input formula. Now you might not have ever noticed where input formula is, but on edit box uh, fields here, edit box controls, if I undock our edit box properties and drag this down, it's all the way down at the bottom. So for our input formula, what I've done is I've added each of these different variables to create a new um, part number. So let me go ahead and go through that. Uh, I'm going to choose the variable called file type first, and then I'm going to manually type in a dash here. Then I'm going to choose the next variable, which is vendor, and I'm going to put a dash. And then last but not least, I need my variable number, which corresponds to the serialized number component. And again, I want this to be read only, so I'm going to put that checkbox there. Let me redock and uh, save this card. Now I did save this into a specified folder so that I can do some testing and the folder is called part numbering. So I've saved this card to be used with SolidWorks part files, SLD PRTs, uh, under the part numbering um, folder. Now that I've created the data card, let's go ahead and test this in the vault. Uh, I'm going to create a new file and test the input formula field. I do want to point out that there is one limitation, which is uh, that the input formula does require user interaction to trigger the field. So let's take a look at what that means. So I've got a, a local vault view here and I've got Axel. Um, being used and uh, it's already used the serial number 379 but you'll notice that the new part number field here is still blank and that's because it does require user interaction such as dropping this down and choosing a type to force this to update and then last but not least we need our vendor code so I've got bolt translating to BLT southern something changing to SSG and then building up that number let's go ahead and check this file in and we can copy and paste it to test it one more time. Yes, I want to generate new numbers. And now I've got 381, who knows what, and housing. So as you can see, user interaction triggers the input formula to update properly. And uh, we're able to use our alias sets as well as our serialized number component to create a new part number, a smarter part number. So thanks for watching Enterprise PDM Quick Tips, a smarter part number. Once again, Katherine Brooks, Enterprise PDM Applications Engineer for Trimic, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.